Hey guys, Mars Second here bringing another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video and so today I'm going to be doing a team building guide for the LR Go Bros EZA that's coming out over on JP. Uh, I'm pretty sure by the time this video goes up, if you're watching it as soon as it comes out, um, I think it's like 11 hours until the event comes out. Um, so yeah, putting this guide together uh, to give you guys a heads up. now. The wi because I think the data download is still, or has only just happened, there is no wiki page for this. So, uh, shout out to the uh, other, the Dokon info site. Um, you can see here the category weakness is planetary destruction. And then, as always, for these LR EZAs, it is only 10 stages. And then if you want to go past stage 10, um, you can farm Hercule statues. Now, as always with an LR EZA, you want to prioritize uh, the Link legendary power in order to do damage, and then planetary destruction characters are the characters that will take less damage. So, technically, you can bring LRs not in planetary destruction, and they will still be able to do good damage, but then if they get hit, they will take a lot of damage, especially nearer to the end. So if we take a look at Planetary Destruction, it is quite a small category. And when it comes to an LR EZA, as you can see, there aren't a huge amount of uh, LRs. So for this guide, as always, I'm going to talk about the top picks and honourable mentions. If there's any units you think I missed out or should have talked more about, do let me know down below in the comment section. And if you do find the guide helpful at all, do hit that like button. So I'm probably not going to talk about any of the super class units because unless you are running like a full on planetary destruction leader, you can't run them on a lot of these team setups anyway. And then realistically, most of them aren't going to be super good. Like AGL Gohan gives good defensive support, but is an AGL unit and is not an LR, right? So, um, but anyway, we'll start off with probably one of the top picks if you want to make the most varied team possible, and that is the AGL LR Golden Freezer, because whilst his leader skill is only 150%, he is a planetary destruction lead, he gives four key, and he is an LR himself, right? Because the ideal build for these LR EZAs, if you can swing it, is to build a full LR team. Because remember, whilst I will talk about some TURs in this guide that can be quite useful on the team, the more TURs you have, the more likely it is you're going to get a rotation where you only have one LR, and then that means they can't get legendary power active, so they can't do the extra damage. Now, you can beat LR EZAs. I've even done some of these in the past, right, with a full team of TURs. It just takes a lot longer because you do less damage, right? And EZAs, most people, you just want to get in there, get out with your medals, and then EZA your unit, right? So, ideally, you want to bring as many LRs as possible. So, this guy... Doesn't matter that he has type disadvantage, he has a ton of damage reduction. Uh, EZAs are the perfect event for him because in longer events he loses his damage reduction as the event goes on. But EZAs are quite short, so he's pretty much always going to be in a position where he's going to be very strong defensively. So Golden Freezer, even if you're not using him as the leader, is definitely a top pick to be run on this team for this event, right? And then next up, in terms of planetary destruction leads, we have the Int Broly, who I, if I recall correctly, into in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Introduced, there you go, the category into the game. Um, now, obviously, he is a TUR, but he has type advantage. Uh, because you're fighting a hybrid Saiyan enemy, he has a decent amount of damage reduction. He has some crit chance as well. Um, obviously, you can throw out a couple of additional supers. Like, he'll still be able to do some okay damage, but of course, he is not an LR. He is another good pick for a leader. He has movie bosses as the sub lead. So, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you have to bring some non planetary destruction units, there's obviously a lot of movie bosses, LRs, that you could pick from. One that comes to mind straight away is like the in LR Bojack. But he's not going to be in this guide because he's not on planetary destruction. But he could be useful on the team. Just remember, if he gets hit, he's going to take a lot of damage, right? So, and then in terms of the planetary destruction leader skill, we have these guys who are the side banner unit that just came out with Turles. Uh, they are planetary destruction 3 key and 130. Uh, they support uh, space traveling warriors uh, as well. Well, they support planetary destruction and then give extra support to space traveling warriors. So these guys can be good on the team just as a support unit, even if you're not running them as the lead. Just remember what I said about running too many um, TURs, but these guys definitely can be very good. Like you could run these guys as a slot one unit uh, on a team where they ha you just have a ton of other LRs. So you're always gonna have LRs floating in to the third slot who can then activate legendary power 
for the unit who's in slot two, right? So these guys definitely could be very useful. And as a last resort, right, they have to play as any destruction leader skill. Now, I would say one of the easier ways to build the team is not to worry so much about the leader skill planetary destruction um, because there's a couple of units that we can use who we can build a team of full planetary destruction units like LR Final Form Cooler. So he leads terrifying conquerors or movie bosses. Obviously this includes a lot of the freezer units that are on the planetary destruction category. There are some units of course that won't fit into his leader skill but he is a very, very strong unit, as we all know. Can fire off tons of super attacks, do loads of damage. Like, he can be very, very good, right? I would recommend running him in this event, even if you're not running him as the leader. Just be aware that, obviously, his leader skill is going to leave out some of the units. Units like this guy right here, in Cell, he could be really, really good for this event, right? Very powerful. Uh, he can save you from... Uh, you know, losing and get the full heal if you're struggling in the later stages. And then, of course, once he transforms, he becomes incredibly powerful. But he's not going to fit on any of these builds if you're using any of these, like, movie bosses or space-traveling warriors leads. So this category has a few units that could be pretty useful who won't fit on some of those other team builds. But I do feel like overall those team builds are probably going to be slightly better, right? Like a full movie bosses and terrifying conquerors build with cooler... Um, is probably going to be better than running a slightly restricted planetary destruction leader <clears throat> just so you can run units like Cell. So next up we have the LR Full Power Freezer. Again, not a leader, but could be very good, especially on Cooler's team. There's a lot of Wicked Bloodline characters in this category, so they're going to share a lot of links together. They're going to be able to do a lot of damage. Um, overall, just a very strong way to build the team. We even have the free-to-play option with the Prime Battle First Form Freezer. Obviously, he's aged out a little bit. You know, if you're getting to, like, stage 10 and he's taking a super attack, he's probably going to take quite a bit of damage. But he is still a very solid unit for a free-to-play option. And he fits very well alongside all of those other Wicked Bloodline characters, right? Uh, next up we have Broly. So any, uh, you know, if you're using the Planetary Destruction lead, you're fine. Cooler, of course, leading movie bosses means we can have uh, Broly's on the team. Uh, because we're fighting Hybrid Saiyans, he gets the uh, extra key. Um, it's just a very powerful unit. There's a Goku family enemy, of course. So he's got effective against all types. So this guy definitely can put out a ton of damage. Defense-wise, he's not the best. So again, if you're on like stage 10 and he eats a super, he's going to take a lot of damage, but he can put out a lot of damage. So he definitely will be quite effective. And then there's the tech Broly, who doesn't have his easy A yet. His defense definitely can be a liability. But next to the other LR Broly, like these guys can put out quite a lot of damage. Um, obviously, this guy can transform on turn four, which if you get to turn four, in your, maybe in the later stages, is probably going to be the last turn. And then he has an active skill that can be used immediately to get a guaranteed 24 key and an attack buff. So if you get to turn four and then transform with this Broly, you're just going to win that turn, right? So definitely good for outputting the damage, just not the best when it comes to defense. Uh, next up, we have the uh, Great Ape Vegeta. So he's another one of these characters, right? He's only going to fit on the team if you really are running like a proper planetary destruction build because he's not a movie boss. Uh, he's not a terrifying conqueror. He is a space traveling warrior, although that's not part of Cooler's leader skill. Um, but he can be pretty good, right? Guards, if he's getting hit in slot one, gets extra key. Um, it doesn't matter that he has an AoE, right, because that's not important in this event, but he can be pretty solid, definitely not like a crazy super top pick when you think about some of the other units that we've talked about, but you do want, as I've already said, as many LRs as possible on the team, right, so you can get that legendary power link active and do a ton of damage. We also have this uh, Vegeta that can exchange into Goku, who's on planetary destruction. Uh, is he? He's not on Space Traveling Warriors, is he? No, and obviously he's not on Movie Bosses as well. But he can be very, very good. Um, you also have the potential to revive and exchange into Goku, who then also can put out tons of damage. And one of the things about these two guys, they always do this with new EZAs, where they make it so the team build can be run very effectively if you've pulled the new unit. So we have the physical Turles, who just came out on JP. His leader skill is Space Traveling Warriors, which is going to include a bunch of the coolers. 
and then pure saiyans which will include the two vegeta units we just talked about it will include the brolies and then his extra 30 percent is to planetary destruction so all of those characters are going to be getting the full 200 percent leader skill so this guy in terms of the coverage of his leader skill he actually has a better leader skill for this easy a than lr cooler because a lot of the movie bosses and stuff that you bring under Cooler's leader skill, if they're not on transformation boost, they're not getting the full 200%. Whereas a lot of the units that we've talked about in this guide already are going to get the full 200% leader skill from this Turles. So if you pulled him, then he's going to be really good because you're fighting a Goku family enemy, which means he's actually going to get his entrance animation, which gives everybody the uh, permanent buff. And then you can use his active skill from turn three because there's a Goku family enemy. So Turles is probably... It's, it's a coin toss because I would say he's probably the best leader for the event just because of his category leads and the, his like intro animation being activated. But he's not an LR, right? So again, you know, the more TURs you have, the more issues you can run into with turns where you can't actually activate um, legendary power. So that is obviously something that you have to be aware of. But definitely a very, very good leader for uh, this event. Um, so we'll talk about a couple more TURs now. Uh, like I say, you don't want to run too many TURs, but there are some that can be very useful. And if you're missing out on a bunch of these LRs we've talked about, you kind of don't really have much of an option, right? So this Freezer, who is a free-to-play unit, is still very, very good when there is a uh, Goku family enemy because he's supporting, he's got guard, he's got damage reduction. Like This guy's just very, very good on the team in almost any event where you're fighting Goku family. I mean, as we get to the harder and harder events coming out, even, you know, like the ones from the anniversary where you fight the anniversary LRs, he will start to age out, like he does start to take a bit of damage. But in something like an easy A, which is not particularly difficult, uh, this guy definitely will be very, very effective. So he is worth considering. And of course, if you're running a bunch of the other freezer and cooler units, he shares a lot of links with them. Uh, then we have STR, uh, final form cooler, well, uh, fourth form cooler who transformed into final form cooler uh, obviously a very very good option for supporting a lot of the other units uh, providing links to them and uh, the rotation of him and the lr cooler is obviously still incredibly powerful um, so he's very very good you can't attack down or defense down the enemy so him getting his extra super from his passive is not going to happen but obviously he can still be a very very powerful unit so he can be very good as well uh, then we have this tech transforming freezer He's not ideal, um, but, you know, when you're running a team that has a lot of other Wicked Bloodline characters, he's getting a lot of links active. He heals you at the start of each turn as he transforms up through his forms. So that can be pretty useful because, remember, you can't use items in an easy A. So units that can provide free healing are always going to be quite nice to have as well. So he can be a decent honorable mention. Same with this guy because we're running a lot of Wicked Bloodline characters. He only supports sworn enemies, which the coolers aren't on. But he is in himself, so he has type advantage. He can definitely be pretty good for this easy A as far as TURs go. And then the last honorable mention that I had here was this 50% support for Extreme Int. We've talked about quite a few Extreme Int characters. This guy also links really well with that uh, Vegeta that exchanges into Goku. He is an orb changer, so you know even if you're not getting the orbs for him, you can help out some of the LRs. I know these units are... Uh, ones that not as many people have because those banners didn't come around very often and even when they did they often dropped at times where there was much more valuable banners you should be dropping your stones into like i have all of these units but most of them i literally only have one copy and they're 55 percent so maybe one day in the future they'll easy a them and bring out a banner where you can get them and then finally put them into like the general pool or something but i know a lot of people don't have a lot of these units but he can be quite useful so if we go back to planetary destruction um, obviously Jackie Chun could be pretty good if you're just running a full-on planetary destruction lead, but he's not going to link well with anyone else on the team, right? So not exactly the craziest. And then same with Piccolo because we're not running a Kid Gohan. I mean, like I say, you could run the AGL Kid Gohan and run those two together, but that's not going to give Piccolo legendary power and he wants to be in slot one. So not really the best option. Um, LR Turles, I should have actually brought him up as an honorable mention, especially if you are running the physical Turles. But even if you're not, this guy is a support unit. 
um, for terrifying conquerors, which a lot of these characters are. So he can definitely be very, very useful on the team. Um, I didn't talk about LR full power free to the AGL one because he's got type disadvantage. You're not fighting a Goku, so he's not getting guaranteed crits. So I think in this event in particular, the STR one is probably better. Because remember, easy A's, you can't run same name units. So if you're not running physical Turles, you could also run AGL Turles, I guess. Um, he is type disadvantage, so if you are unlucky and he eats a super, he will take a lot of damage. But he is providing key attack and defense support to all allies because you're fighting a super type enemy. Oh, and of course, if you don't have LR Golden Freezer, uh, you could run the AGL TUR one. And he does the same job in terms of tanking. He's just obviously not really going to do any damage. So... I think that's it in terms of the units I would pick out as honourable mentions. The free-to-play STR Turles is okay as well, but again, you'd ideally want to run the physical one or probably even the AGL one before running him, so... <laughs> Kid Buu. I mean, Kid Buu, he's uh, an extreme int leader. If you really have no other options, you could actually make, like, a full extreme int build, but... Yeah, there you go. So, let me know what you guys think down below. Like I said before, if there's any units you think I should have talked about in more detail or that I missed out completely who deserve to mention, let me know down below. And let me know what your team build is going to look like for the GoBros EZA. So, that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been the Master Ningen. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.